Public Works uh, public hearing. We have Director Shanna Whitelaw with us today, along with Faye DeMassimo, as well as Ms. Sharon Wallstrom. And I will turn it over to you, Director Whitelaw. Thank you, Chair um, and Council Members. I'm very glad to be here. I have um, Sharon Wallstrom to my left, who is the Assistant Director and um, our Chief Financial Officer. And I think most people know Ms. Faye DeMassimo, Senior Advisor to the Mayor for Transportation and Infrastructure. So um, thank you for letting us be here today. When I first um, was asked to become Interim Director of Public Works last August, I was really excited about the opportunity. Over the fa last year, I've experienced firsthand the dedicated service of Public Works Operations Team to this community. From the Christmas tragedy on 2nd Avenue, to the winter storms in February, to the flooding event in March, Public Works employees have rose, risen to the occasion to remove demolition debris, plow the snow-covered roads, and remove flood debris from residential properties so the rebuilding can begin. And Public Works did all of this while continuing the day-to-day -day activities that is often unseen or appreciated by our community. Patching potholes, fixing and replacing street and traffic signs, running the convenience centers, as well as the curbside solace and recycling collection must, and it did continue to go on through the whole time. So I want to take this opportunity right now to give a grateful thank you to all of the Public Works team. They make it look easy, and I promise you, having lived through it for the last nine months, it is not. <laughs> I promise you that. Only after being part of the team do I truly, truly appreciate the effort and the work that the Public Works team has done in this past year. So transitioning to the budget, one of the tasks that I was presented with in my role was to evaluate opportunities on how a Department of Transportation for Nashville could be realized. With the support of the administration and this council, I'm excited that Public Works will transition on July 1st into focusing on transportation-related activities as the Nashville Department of Transportation and Multimodal Infrastructure. I'm calling it NDOT for now. At this time, Ms. DeMassimo will transition into the interim director of the DOT, the NDOT, and I will transition into a supporting role for her, as well as assisting with the movement of solid waste activities to water. I can't think of anyone more qualified than Ms. DeMassimo to lead and set a strong foundation for NDOT as we begin our nationwide search for the permanent director. So everyone, exciting times are ahead, it's coming. So this year's submission as you see in your packet, is a public works budget. It was developed based on transportation and solid waste needs, regardless of whether the MOU to create the NDOT was implemented or not. These needs are necessary. However, it was prepared such that the highlights could be independently looked at and reviewed separately as part of transi transition activities if they occur. The mayor's budget fully funds our requests related to both transportation traffic and solid waste. We have prepared a short presentation, which you now have in paper form, because, you know, I'm not very smart with the electronics. So since Ms. DeMosmo is going to be taking over at NDOT, I asked her to help present today, and hopefully we're hopeful that this slide show in paper will help you um, to understand our request in the mayor's budget. So Faye, if you'd like to start. We're gonna have to share a microphone up here because apparently we have a capital need right here. So. Um, First, I, before I offer some remarks, I want to be sure to, I know our partner Steve Bland is out in the audience, and I want to thank Steve for being here as we work together to deliver a multimodal system that serves all of Metro Nashville. Transit success is fundamentally served by the prioritization, including sidewalks, traffic management, Vision Zero, and state of good repair and resurfacing that is included in the transportation plan and in the mayor's budget as it's been presented to you. On the first slide in your packet, uh, there's some information or there's a title called Commitment to Transportation, and I want to talk about that for just a minute. We've had quite the year in transportation. Um, while the pandemic ra raged and all the other things that we were trying to deal with here in Metro Nashville, the many challenges that we had, uh, a transportation plan was approved in December of 2020. The capital spending plan was approved in March of 2021 that really set the course for us moving that forward um, and serving all of Metro Nashville. The historical levels of understaffing and inadequate resourcing in core transportation functions have been recognized by, for some time. You have, you've talked to us about it as council members. 
this investment request not only meets that challenge, but aligns with the focused areas of improvement that have been requested by council members, as well as by the community through the Metro Nashville Transportation Plan, developed over the course of a year, through 11 community listening sessions throughout Metro Nashville, and through three dozen stakeholder listening sessions, a very comprehensive effort. Our downtown neighborhood of residents and businesses, unique in Metro Nashville, with its growth and renovation, also needs modern traffic management and curbside infrastructure to continue to meet the demand. The positions requested serve to build our capacity to manage and deliver supporting accelerated quality work throughout Metro. On the next slide, you'll see um, growth is only accelerating, making a staff DOT an essential immediate need. You can see the growth in vehicle miles traveled, in the growth in delay and congestion, the growth in traffic cr crashes, and the growth in jobs, workers that are coming to us. And again, the request that Shanna is now going to take you through um, only serves to underscore the immediacy of that need. Thank you. Thank you, Faye. I appreciate that. Thanks. So starting with slide three, I think this is one that's very um, telling to what we're trying to do with our, our budget. It's directly tied to the transportation plan as well as to the most recent capital spending plan, which obviously was tied to the transportation. We are focused on implementing the plan while continuing to provide day-to-day -day operational management of right-of-way. The budget requests a total of 42 positions. These are broken down into two big areas, transportation development and delivery and operations and asset management. So looking first, which is on slide three of um, infrastructure development and delivery, we can walk through the first 22 positions. Highlights in our position requests include traffic calming, bikeways, sidewalks, capital projects, and permits. It also funds staffing the new trans traffic management center. As we were developing these processes and, and taking a look at the direction of the new NDOT, we were recognized there are some key positions that currently don't exist in public works will be, but will be necessary for early successes. Specifically, an additional person to focus on the micro-mobility and the scooter initiative that now has contracts and regulations in place and will begin in July. Right-of-way management, beginning with right-of-way acquisition. We'll talk a little bit about that in a minute an active transportation planner. As part of the new NDOT, several positions in planning will transfer into the new department. However, having a lead planner focused on active transportation of sidewalks, bikeways, coordination with parks on greenways, and coordinating with the overall efforts of the planning department is essential for a successful department. And a new one that's important to me, council liaison and community relations coordinator. And most of you know, I was very fortunate to have Mr. John Honeysucker come with me, which was value that we can't imagine. So he cannot continue to do two roles. And when I started this uh, budget, I knew it was going to be a critical position. And back in February, I knew that. Well, just recently now realizing how Mr. Honeysucker will play a key role in the solid waste transition to water, it's even more important that NDOT has their own person to be able to communicate not only to the council, but also to the community and your constituents. So, so that's one dear to my heart. So let's move on to the next slide for cap traffic calming to kind of dig deep a little bit into what this means. Right now we have one dedicated person um, over the last several years to traffic calming. They've been able to accomplish about 10 to 15 projects. Doubling staff, and I know you say, ooh, doubling staff, well that's two. But two people means we can get, hopefully, 20 to 30 projects. And we have recently hired a new consultant who can help with data management. So we're shooting to get to 40 to 50 traffic calming projects a year. That's our goal, and it is funded in the capital spending plan that was just passed. Moving on to sidewalks, the next slide. Currently have three dedicated staff members for sidewalks, and one of those has been vacant since I started at Public Works due to the hiring freeze. By increasing staff and harnessing the experience of our new program manager, LDA, we are committed to the mayor's new performance targets in reducing delivery as well as cost, delivery time as well as cost. Slide seven talks about the traffic management center. 
one of the biggest game changers in managing Nashville's traffic, which is coming back in case you haven't noticed yet, I've noticed it, <laughs> is the establishment of a traffic management center, which is included in the transportation plan. The staffing is based on the recommendations of the Arcadius peer review study. So we didn't just pull it up, we used our peer city comparisons. And we're hopeful with the available partnership and grant funding that we anticipate to receive with the TMC, we're hoping it's gonna start taking shape by the end of the fiscal year. And lastly, another focus in this area is the permit section, which is the next slide. Management of the right of way through the permit section has been under-resourced for many, many years. We haven't been able to keep up with construction growth, and I think that you can see that as you, you come through town. The budget includes four new positions dedicated to inspection um, to the current staff. We recognize that while staffing is important, training of that staff and implementing and improving the current processes that we have is also important as well as emboldening our staff through that training to hold contractors accountable for the activities that they are doing in our right of way. So moving on to operations, which is the next group of activities that we have. In operations, the budget includes 20 additional positions to improve and enhance our current services. One that we're really, really eager to implement is the bikeway sweeper program. We have a great partnership with water services, stormwater in road sweeping, but their focus is on water quality. With the continual growth in bike lane conductivity and hopes for even more bikeways, keeping those lanes is important. So we have funded a, or we've requested a position and we have requested the necessary equipment in OFM's capital request for this year. Maintaining the right of way is important. So if you move to the next slide, this is where the bulk of the rest of the positions are. We propose to increase right of way mowing from three cycles to four cycles during the season. Additionally, those folks will become the snowplow people that everybody's wanted. Six more snow routes would be um, accompanying that right of way mowing team. We propose to add another sidewalk repair crew to provide quicker response to sidewalks, trips, and slips. As you can see there, the legal spends a lot of time settling claims over trips on sidewalks and concrete. And so having a crew dedicated to those quick refixes, those small ones that can be done quickly, um, we think is a game changer for our, our safety in our community. And finally, we have the establishment of an additional signal crew to focus on pole replacement. This is gonna allow the NDOT to begin transition to preventive maintenance instead of reactive maintenance. For many years, particularly in the signal and sign area, we have been focused on reactive and fixing the pole when it falls, not being to get to it before it falls. And when, when we have a wind and we have a storm situation here, we know wooden poles are one of the first things to go. And it's not just the safety hazard, but it's also the cumulative effect of now we have crews trying to fix signals, we have traffic that can't move because the signals are down. So it's cumulative in that factor. And so we want to be uh, more preventive in that mole. Slide 11, it's the next slide moving through. As I indicated, this is public works budget. So solid waste is included in an important component of public works. There are two big items that we've requested in our budget related to that. First is every other week recycling. I think that's something that everybody's been behind and has had to been cut several times over the years due to budget limitations. So we've asked for that um, back this budget. And secondly, there was a recent passage of an ordinance around C and D commercial development plans review. So this would provide the position which is gonna be fully cost recovery through the fees that we presented and that council approved. So with that, I'm happy, and Faye and Sharon, we're happy to answer any questions that you may have um, on any of this information. Councilman Druffel. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Um, two things, um, under charges, commissions, and fees, it looks like you're dropping, it consistently dropped from 18 million to 47, the last year at 6,885 to uh, anticipated 14,562. What what are the and that's revenue sources? So what is the drop? Or could you explain? A significant you? portion of the fee drop is related to to taxi cabs, vend, um, limousines, all those 
transportation licensing type of activities with the economy in the last year, we saw that reduction in fees and we're not sure when we made the budget whether they would be coming back. Uh, you would, it seems like I see them. Uh, so they would be coming back in We hope course. now. Well, yeah, uh, it, it, so maybe is that understated quite a bit? It could be understated now. In February, when we put the budget together, we weren't sure, but I'm hopeful that is, it is under, understated, yes. Okay, thanks. Uh, second question, um, in traffic calming, um, I, it's my highly requested in my neighborhoods. Uh, I don't know how many requests. Um, and I know you were only limited to 15, and we, uh, the, the requests are in January and uh, June, as I recall. Mm -hmm. uh, can you expand those, uh, the times that you can take in request? Uh, would that be possible? Because I know a lot of people would like, to, they'll, they'll forget. They'll, they'll tell me in February and I go June and I try to trace it and all that stuff. But uh, is there a possibility to expand that to have more, uh, a better, uh, more expanded deadlines for, for requests? I think it would be. I think we'd like to first get through the 217 backlog, yes. <laughs> if that makes sense. But I do think that as we grow the program and we get more staff and we get involved, then tweaking the process and improving the process and making it as accessible to um, our constituents is something that we would like to look at, yes. How long does it take in a traffic calming study to identify the, you know, do the study to execute or get the uh, feedback to the uh, to the neighbors that are interested? So um, from traffic calming, once we start a process and we have data collection, it takes several months in order to get the data collected to, to review all of the um, traffic and the, and the accidents and all that information. Then we want to come back and communicate with the, the applicant, have a sit down with them, start to engage with them on what options are available to them. Sure. So that usually takes two to three months once we've got data collection started. We are just now starting data collection probably in the next two months or next two weeks. So it's going to take a little bit. Then we're going to prioritize. We're going to go to um, that community and we're gonna to talk to them about what designs are available, what options are available. Once we get to a design and we agree, we're gonna go through the petition program in which the neighbors themselves, the applicants are asking their um, residents and property owners on that street if they're willing to sign on and you need to have an 80% um, commitment from everyone on that street. And then once we get that, then it's a matter of installation. So it can take as long as it takes for the, the residents to get to their set. We have a six month cap on that. So if you don't get your signatures in six months, we're sorry, we're gonna go spend that money on somebody who can get the signatures. No, I appreciate that. And uh, it, there is, it is a priority for a lot of our communities, mm -hmm. just, and I'm sure you know that, but uh, we appreciate yes. getting that out. And it's not so simple. We, I was involved in the Lower Breslin one. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that was a mess. There's <laughs> a lot of community engagement, we will say. Oh, yeah. <laughs> By all means, but thank you. Okay, I have Councilwoman Johnston, Sepulveda, Porterfield, Councilman Young, Councilman Cash, Councilwoman Henderson. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Everyone. I didn't turn all the way around. I'm sorry. Councilwoman Johnston. Thank you. I'm glad it's you running the microphones and not <laughs> me. <laughs> um, Thank you all for coming today. Um, so, um, Councilman Drevel, I just wanted to, when you were talking about revenues, are you talking about the, the two and a half million dollars that they're showing d lower than last year? I just want to make sure I'm not going to repeat your question. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, so uh, when you're saying that that's understated, which I hope so, if we were to recover some of that two and a half million that you're projecting out, where would that money um, be spent? Do you have an idea? Yes, revenue typically is, is tied to those special purpose funds. So where we're losing revenue in parking, for example, that's part of it too, now that I realize 
thank you, Sharon, for what page I'm on. Parking is a great one that we've lost revenue on, so we've reduced our expenses. So if we get parking revenue back, that will allow us to do maintenance in that area. If we have revenue in some other areas um, related to the TLC, related to vendors, we can, we can generate and put that back into it. But we haven't identified a specific, if it's in a special purpose fund, it needs to, to work with that. Okay, and that actually leads right into, I was noticing that parking, that budget was basically cut in half. Yes. And so can you explain that? And does it have anything to do with the new, like, sort of automated thing we're looking at or what? Uh, no, parking, the parking is related to the parking garages that we manage, which is the library's parking garage and this parking garage. So in the last year, no one came downtown. So we've had to cut our expenses because the revenue wasn't there. Okay. That ties to they cut staffing. They've, we've, we've cut um, improvements that we were going to do to the um, automatic um, pay, all of those things are tied to parking. This is exclusive of the parking, smart parking program that we're initiating. It's okay. separate from that. Okay, gotcha. Um, I'm assuming that this budget is probably a little bit complicated because we're sort of adding MDOT, but we're not quite 100% there, sort of, so it's sort of commingled, I'm assuming. And so when, when I'm looking at um, the, the street construction, really no change there. And then the traffic engineering, really no change there. Roadway maintenance is up 500,000, but w that's really not a whole lot. But then there's an addition to this new thing called the transportation, you mm -hmm. know, all that of 1.4 and 1.255 for operations. Um, I'm assuming that some of that is moving there, or I mean, is there a crossover there? Because I understand we have to maintain what we're doing in public works still, but then we're creating this de this new department. So is that the crossover there? Uh, the public public works activities and the the NDOT activities will all be together. So there won't be a separation. So public works will function as the Department of Transportation. Okay. So then the 1.4 for transportation development and parking, which is new for this year, period. Right? Which is this page? Yes, that is tied to all of those positions that I just spoke of. Okay, and same thing with the operations. And, right, and so it, they're separated uh, and add to what's in Public Works GSD, if that makes sense. Okay, um, I did notice that waste collection is down $486,000, which is a little bit scary because we've had so many challenges. Um, wh why? <laughs> Uh, we renegotiated the recycling contract that we have because of the way recycling is not as, um, a, I guess, make, we don't make as much money on recycling as we used to make. So we renegotiated that contract, which is a reduction. It is not that we're not needing the money for other things. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, you know my position on traffic calming. I think we've had long discussions about it, yes. and that is the outside of can I get a police officer to come over here? <laughs> you know, can we get extra yes. patrols and all this from a public safety standpoint? Um, again, public safety is traffic calming too. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just want to put that plug in for, I mean, if I could put 10 people on that and add more from the capital budget, I think that's something that's going to really improve the quality of life of everybody that's here. Um, and, and so um, that's, I'm all for that. I also appreciate you putting a time limit. I think that was probably my district that was. Yes, ma'am, it was. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. We had a small problem there. Um, but so um, one of the things that I want to um, ask about, because I've just noticed it, and, I, and you got an email from me today mm -hmm. um, about utility coordination. So we had public, uh, I mean, Paragon Mills Road was beautifully repaved at the end of 2019. It's mm -hmm. amazing. And then all of a sudden, a year and a half later, it's dug up and it's awful. You can't even drive on it. You have to, I had to drive on the center lane just to get, a, you know, away from it. Um, and I feel like there's got to be a better way to look forward at, hey, because that was a massive, you know, gas line project, right? So that didn't just come out of the blue. That had probably been on the books for however long. We have got to do a better job of coordinating that because it's a waste of money to repave something and then and then turn around and dig it up. So do we have that position or is that somewhere in here to be the person? And I don't know the process, but I asked what the process was in the email. But do we have the, the ability to 
really communicate throughout the department and go, hey, what's on everybody's horizon so that we don't get ahead of our skis, you know, and waste money there. And then, you know, the neighbors are going, oh my gosh, what just happened? You know, this was so great. And now it's, what's this? So um, can you speak to that a little bit? Sure. There's two things, and I'll start with it, and, and Faye will, will continue up with that. We do have, um, currently, we do have regular meetings, and for, as part of the paving program specifically, we reach out to all of our utility partners before we pave. So we reach out to all of them. What projects do you have coming? What do you have in the area? And we will adjust our paving um, program to make sure if they have something coming in the next year, we don't want to pay. You're absolutely right about that. And so we work hard with that. We have started utility coordination meetings, but we have worked in, in we know it's a problem. We've been working diligently, and I have not yet figured out how your specific area got dropped and how such a large gas project occurred without our knowledge of it. But Faye has been working a lot in this space to improve it even more. I think Chen has already described it, but I'll just restate. We have developed a, a utility coordination process that's occurring at two different levels. One is at the staff level. It's on a monthly basis, and one of the things that we're doing is exactly what you're talking about. Everybody comes to the meeting with their six 12-month work programs of what they're going to be doing, and we're literally sitting there comparing notes, if you will, to see where there's potential conflict and to figure out how to avoid those things. Um, unfortunately, it sounds like in this case something fell through the cracks. We also have a, a group that's meeting quarterly that's more at like a policy management level, and we are resolving some of the issues around ADA compliance, uh, policy level utility coordination, cost reimbursement, all those those kinds of more program level things. Um, and we expect um, over the course of the next six to 12 months to have some really substantive uh, program improvements there as well. I'm thinking that maybe one of the reasons that this particular project fell through the cracks is that it was outside of that 12 month mark. So. That project, I'm, I don't know that that's, maybe it did. My 2020 timing on my brain isn't the greatest, but I know that that, that was repaved and it was completed roundabout when I was elected just because people were complaining about some things. So October-ish of 2019, and this the whole uh, gas line thing, I'm pretty sure started in 2021. So that would have been outside of that year mark. So I'm wondering if it would be better to look at outside of a year, because I mean, these things are, you know, out and, and go, hey, because I don't want to repave something and then even two years later, dig it up. I mean, we want these things to last. So what's that sweet spot of where we're going to look for this utility coordination? And I think it does need to be out more than 12 months. Yeah, well, two things I would say to that. First is it still should have been caught because yeah. when I was talking about six to 12 months, think about how far um, that, how, that, that we would have known even in that current time frame when something's being designed, there, there are lots of opportunities for it to have still been caught in a six to 12 month sort of here's what's coming up kind of evaluation. Because um, these are the guys that are out there designing the projects and delivering them every day. So, so that shouldn't, it just slipped through the cracks and it shouldn't have. But to your point, we do have a five year, for example, five year paving program and they also have longer term programs and that's a part of what's feeding into these windows of upcoming activity that we're looking at. So we have an opportunity to be sure that we're comparing those as well. Okay, um, and my last comment, because um, I'm sorry to get so specific, but I do think it's important countywide for us to understand that this utility coordination, but um, I think in the past, I don't know how long, maybe four, six, eight years, the pendulum has swung really far into being heavily dependent on contractors. I think that's gotten way, way out of hand. I know we'll never not have contractors, but I think, you know, we were way over here, now we're way over here. We've had some issues with contractors. I know we're looking at procurement and all that stuff, but I really would like to see us move back to a, a more balanced area where we've got some in-house things that we can control those costs and maybe bring those down. Um, I'm, I'm thinking significantly. That would just be, and I know that's your thought process too, and I appreciate um, what you're doing. You have yeoman's duty because what a... Um, large level of opportunity <laughs> we have in public work. So, you know, thank you for what you're doing. Thank you, council member. That's one of the reasons we've asked for 42 positions to begin that process of moving away from the dependents.
Councilwoman Sepulveda. Thank you, Chair, uh, and thank you for recognizing me, even though I am not on this committee. Um, I just had a couple of questions. I think, um, you know, some of what Councilwoman Johnston, some of the things that she brought up, I, I, I think a lot of us in South and Southeast Nashville have been complaining about, you know, trash pickup for a long time. Uh, and I am thankful that Public Works did pick up some of those routes and, you know, a lot of that has died down. My question is, with these 14 additional staffers, will that be enough to make sure that we meet all of the, all of the routes on time? Uh, and my second question is, are we going to outsource any, any of this operation and uh, would that go to procurement? Thank you for the question, um, council member. Um, for the first question, as far as the 14, the 14 employees will be dedicated to every other week recycling. So we are, so they will be focused on recycling. Um, the current status quo for solid waste is that approximately 70% is under contract with Red River, 15% is under contract with Waste Industries, and 15% um, is done in-house. We are continuing to work with our contractors to try and improve the service. We've recognized that the service got better, and now it's slipping. So we recognize that, and we're trying to get them back into uh, a space working within the contractual obligations that we have, taking over what we can. But it is not intended in this budget to take over any additional solid waste activities. The positions are tied to every other week recycling. And all recycling activities are internal to um, Metro. So we don't contract out any of the collection of recycling activities. And your second question, if I recall correctly, was <laughs> contracts, right? About if we're going to contracts. It is not our intention to increase any of our contracts. One of the things that I've taken a deep dive in rela related to solid waste is when the contracts are um, expiring and we are going out for support is to reallocate. So I hope to be back before, or, or we hope to be back before the body when time comes for contract, looking at increasing our solid waste collection and bringing some more of that internal so we have more control over it. But unfortunately, our contracts or got a couple more years on them. Great. I, I am uh, happy to hear that. Uh, I'd rather have something uh, be yes. outsourcing. Um, so, okay, so so you, you believe that the 14 additional staff will cover uh, all of the necessary routes for, for the, um, for the recycling? Correct. Yes, we already have dedicated staff for recycling right now for once a month recycling. So now that we're going to every other week recycling, this staff will will be the ones who pick up on the odd, odd days, if that makes sense. So yes. Now, if, if, if uh, you know, waste continues to fall through the cracks and we continue to see um, routes not being picked up on time, would there be the consideration of using some of these 14 staffers to, you know, pick up uh, some of those routes, or or is there other things that go into that decision? Sure. Um, it's, it's a little complicated in the sense that um, for an emergency need, if we had a complete emergency need, let's think back to the horrors of last summer that we don't want to repeat ever again. Um, we can suspend recycling activities and focus completely on, on trash collection because that is a health and safety um, issue regarding having trash piling up on the streets. But for us to say, let's take those 14, we have a problem called having enough garbage trucks. So then it becomes a problem that we might have staffing that we could reallocate, but we don't have the appropriate vehicles to do it. But we always are working on contingency plans on how do we work through that um, so that we're not where we were last summer and we're thinking ahead. Okay. And my last question is, will we have the infrastructure in place uh, with this in increase of recycling? Do we have the infrastructure for the recycling? For the increase in recycling material if we are, if we are uh, expanding uh, collection. Yes, we have sufficient trucks. We have, um, we have, um, our contract has been renewed with our, our recycling um, service provider to where we, where we haul the recycled materials to, yes. And we have carts for recycling um, if, as we expand the program. Hopefully by having every other week recycling, we're hoping to expand the program even greater. Those are all my questions, thank you. Thank you.
I'm gonna let uh, Public Works Chair Nash go next, and then I'll come back to you, Councilwoman Porterfield. Just for everybody's clarification, in the, back to the <laughs> back to the gas line on Paragon Mills. Uh, I'm assuming that the gas company comes back and uh, is responsible for repairing that roadway yeah. and and uh, fixing that cost. Uh, yes, when yeah. the when they're done, they will be required to repay a full full lane width of where they have messed everything up. It's not as good. I'll be honest with Council Member Johnson. It's yeah. not as good as the beautiful product we had beforehand. But they will be required to put it back to our standards. Make them make them do it nicely. Yes. <laughs> Councilwoman Porterfield. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you all so much for, for being here today. Um, Council Member Sepulveda asked a few of my questions, and I just really have to uh, reiterate about the, the trash problem that we're still seeing in Southeast. Yes. So I'm still getting calls that, yes. you know, trash is being picked up late. So I am 100% in favor of um, increase in recycling to um, twice a month. I think that's very needed for, for a multitude of reasons that we won't have to go into because we can all agree that that's needed. Um, but there has to be a way to address the trash issue. Um, I, I don't, I understand that we are hopeful that things get better with our vendors, but our constituents aren't relying on hope. Yes. They want their trash picked up on the day that their trash is supposed to be picked up. And the issue that we face, because our pickup day is on a Friday, if the vendor gets behind on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, now we're getting picked up on Saturday. And that's fine if you actually get picked up on Saturday. But if the facility where they empty their trucks is closed because they're working half a day, because they're only open half a day on Saturday, and those trucks fill up, that means some of our people don't get picked up on Saturday. That means they don't get picked up until Monday. So mm -hmm. now trash has been out from Thursday night until Monday. And I know you all know this, but for the viewing audience and for my colleagues who may not be aware of that, our community want something better, yes. you know? We don't want to drive down the street and smell mm -hmm. trash, or mm -hmm. if there's a, a thunderstorm or it rains too hard, trash cans are getting knocked over, and now all of that debris is in the street. So I implore you all to find a better solution for the issue with trash, because this solution, um, in my personal and uh, opinion, is not an acceptable uh, solution. We have to find a better way to address this trash issue. Um, with regards to our Metro employees, I, I do have concerns as well. Um, I know they were working a four day work week to address, you know, some of, some of them were, you know, also helping the supplement and pick up trash is my understanding that they're now on a five day work week. Was there any additional compensation for them, um, increasing the work schedule? My understanding is that their work day was shortened to compensate for now having to work that fifth day um, because now they're working on Mondays. However, because our vendors get behind, they now have to work longer to finish their routes. So in essence, they are working an additional day without compensation. So is that, is there any truth to that or have you all looked at addressing that? Um, thank you, Council Member, for the question. When we moved and transitioned from a four-day collection cycle to a five-day collection cycle back last fall, we had um, Public Works employees who worked four tenths, so they had a 40-hour week, but their schedule was 40 hours. We adjusted that to be four eighths, so they're having the same 40-hour week as they were having um, beforehand. It was just a change of, of times and days. As far as overtime, if they are picking up, if we are picking up some collection routes because our contractor cannot, so we're volunteering to make sure it gets done, they are paid time and a half overtime um, for working the extra hours, and we start with that as voluntary. So those who, who want the overtime are the ones that we give it to first. So as far as, um, them having to work extra hours, it's, it, as I said, it's voluntary, and the number of hours they've worked has, has remained the same. It was just reallocated between Mondays and Fridays. Thank you. I believe that was a concern because some of the employees, you know, because I, I think it's a little less competitive when you're working for the city as if you worked in the private market. So I think some of the employees were using that 
additional off day to work, you know, a second job. Mm -hmm. And there were some concerns about mandatory overtime. So are you all requiring mandatory overtime when we get behind or is it just completely voluntary? Um, for the last several months, I can speak for sure that it's been voluntary. It has not been mandatory for the last several months. The only time I will say that we had mandatory um, solid waste collection was um, the week after we were after the ice storm and the snowstorm when we didn't have any trash collection for that week, obviously trying to catch everybody up the next week, we did have some overtime then. Okay, thank you for clearing that up. And then my next question, um, staying in the tune of uh, solid waste, um, have you all determined who will be heading up that solid waste department? Um, solid waste will transition to um, Metro Water Services in July 1st, and um, the interim director of the solid waste division will be Mr. John Honeysucker. Oh, okay. Congratulations, Mr. Honeysucker. Um, my next question is the individuals that were with Public Works that are now moving over to solid waste, um, and I don't know if this is a question for you all or if it will be better served with Metro Water, but the individuals that will be transferring over, will they be allowed to keep their seniority uh, with Metro or is that, are they starting over? Um, no, they will keep their seniority. Metro Water Services employees are civil servants in the same way as the general um, government's employees and they'll all be civil, they'll, they'll retain all of their, um, their time and their seniority. Thank you for clarifying that. And then my last question is uh, with traffic coming, and some of my colleagues kind of touched on this as well. I think it is um, very exciting to hear that we are doubling that program. That is absolutely amazing. As Councilmember Johnson said, you know, with um, besides calls for additional police and trash, traffic coming is in my top three that I get requests from. It is amazing that we're doubling, but we're going from one to two. So <laughs> was there any, you know, rationale as to why we're going for two employees as opposed to three or four or five so that we could kind of address um, and help speed up some of that backlog that you guys have? Um, yes, I think it's a, it's a matter of, of being able to start the train, if we will say. Trying to put too much effort in one area, you can oversaturate and you can stretch yourself too thin. So we want to do it in a, in a calculated method of this year, add one, see how that works. Next year we'll be back if that's successful to add another. And also there's a capacity about what you as council members and what your community can handle. 12, 12 ongoing traffic calming projects with constituents and meetings could be could be overwhelming. So we want to make sure that we kind of find a, a buildup and we, we get a capacity that we feel comfortable with, that you feel comfortable with um, before we, we jump. I guess to say we want to walk before we run. Thank you. I don't know if I could speak on behalf of my colleagues, but we want you to run. Like we, need, we, need, we definitely need there to get so more many, than two. There are so many places we want to run as well, but it is just hard to get that train moving. Remember that the 42 positions can't be hired overnight either, so it's not as if on day one we will have them all. We still have to go through the full um, process of hiring and onboarding and educating, so that's the other issue. I'd hate to come and ask for a bunch of positions that we, we can't fill because we can't get them all processed through. Thank you, and then just uh, two more questions if you'll indulge me, Madam Chair. Um, you spoke about the program will be uh, ramp ramping up, I think you said in the next few weeks um, with that data collection and addressing um, you know, some of those projects. Uh, this will be from projects that were applied for in which year? We've put all the years that have been put on hold together. We've done the first round of those from 19 and, and 20, January of 20. We've prioritized those looking at the data that we have um, that we can collect from, from um, crash records and speed records and things like that. So those are the first that will begin um, data collection, the 19 through 20, January of 20. And um, then we'll also be prioritized the ones that have come from the last round. So, so the, um, I believe the last ones that were supposed to be announced were going to be in March 2020, and those traffic common projects were never right. announced. And they will be announced. Those that, okay. that, that are supposed to be, we are hoping to announce those. Those we've done the work on, and now we're ready to go and move forward with engagement. We hope to be announcing those soon. Okay, thank yes. you. And then my last question is um, on slide five, you, have, you said that there are three ongoing and 
fiscal year 2021, Cross Timbers, Cleveland Park, and Mary Oaks. Which year were those applied for? I'll be honest, council member, I do not know. Okay, but they were not applied for in 2021? No. Okay. No, there's been no, there's been no work done on anything that was applied for that's in the 2021 applications because of funding restrictions and spending restrictions. They're in a nice pile that have been inventoried and logged and are ready to begin their work. So, and we hope to have more. These are just the ones that are going on right now. We hope to have more as we get data collection going. Thank you. I just wanted, I think it was important to clarify that because that's one of the concerns that my constituents mm -hmm. reach out about a lot. They hear about a project happening and they say, well, you tell me the program was on hold and I'm you know, trying to explain this was approved in you know, 2019 yeah. or, or, or whatever. So I think that you know, they need to hear that these are not new projects. So yes. these, thank you for that. These three projects specifically had gone through everything and were, to, Councilman Syracuse is kind of smiling. He's going through petition process right now. So they were right at that point when we had to stop. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for explaining that. Thank you, Madam Chair. Note to next uh, year's budget chair, Public Works probably needs longer uh, for their <laughs> hearing. Um, we are at time, however, there are several people in the queue and I'm gonna finish the queue. Uh, keep in mind that you may need to send some of your questions to Maria and Austin um, so that they can get those answers and share them with the full council. So next is Councilman Young. Why has everyone got to talk trash about public works today? <laughs> ha, that's my, my dad joke. All right, I'll stay on council and not on a comedy tour. Um, just a, a couple of questions I'll, I'll cut through to. Um, with sidewalks, you know, the mayor talked about really improving the efficiency and the speed of delivery. And so I guess I'd like to hear the, once again, I know we're crunched on time, I guess maybe the real quick overview of what we're doing, what sort of investments in this operating budget are gonna improve that efficiency and, and how that's gonna play out. I think Shanna's already gone through with you some of the personnel um, investments right. that are proposed there to be able to accelerate that program. But we also know that in order to achieve the uh, timeline reductions and the cost reductions that the mayor has specified in terms of performance targets for us, that there are other uh, parts of the, of the program, not just simply more bodies to it, but how we go about doing our business. And we've gone through an exhaustive review of what are the uh, components of pro sidewalk project delivery that are causing us those time delays and those cost increases. And we have, have uh, developed a program to address all of those and are very confident we're gonna be able to meet, although the mayor gave us a very ambitious goal, we're very confident that this year we're gonna be able to meet those metrics. You're gonna see sidewalks delivered twice as fast and at 20% less cost. Right on, cool. Sounds like we're getting a coupon. Um, the Increase to fund every other week recycling um, is about around $900,000. But when we look at the increase in the USD's transfer to the solid waste fund this year, that increase is only about $250,000. So curbside recycling is only a service to residents of the USD. So Am I correct? And in, in, it, it just it gives this appearance that once again there are ratepayers in the GSD subsidizing services in the USD that are only provided to the USD. And this might be a question that is maybe more targeted at Metro Finance, maybe, and y'all say so. But that like there's that's a very big difference that um, is problematic for folks like me that represent the GSD only. Can you tell me where you're looking to, I just I want to make sure I'm on the right page. When we look at the... I just want to make sure, because I think sure. I know the answer, but I want to make sure. Absolutely. Um, well, I had to go and put me on the spot as well. On the at a glance page, I can't. I accidentally clicked way off on the PDF. Mm -hmm. um, it uh, lists the increase in expenditures for uh, 
transfers to the solid waste fund. And it gives an amount for the GSD increase in transfers to solid waste and an increase in the USD transfer to solid waste. USD's increase in the transfer to solid waste is about 250 grand, but the cost to provide, to go to every other week recycling is about 900 grand. Right. There, Why so is that discrepancy there's there? There's contractual savings that we are, that goes back to savings in, in some of our contracts with the recycling process and um, some trash collection where we took over the Madison route. So, so there's actually savings that are in there that offset the increase in, in um, salary. I, th I think that answers your question. Maybe not. I might, I might get with Metro Finance on that because this is a kind I of a deeper, yeah. fi more philosophical. It might, it's probably more deeper than I Sure. <laughs> and I apologize for and it, trying to get too deep. If I can jump in, uh, Councilman Young, there is also in the budget um, the $1 million for that USD GSD study, and that's Correct. the purpose of that to kind of figure out Correct. this kind of stuff. Sure. Um, the council liaison position that's going in, I guess I'm a little confused because we, we have that, um, I thought, because, and though I haven't seen her or heard from her, um, the, the position that I assume Ms. Stone still fills. Uh, she was, is, she is the PIO. So she backfilled our PIO position okay. a few years ago, and that position that she had got, we'll just say, reallocated for other activities before I got to Public Works. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm just, I, I, I saw that and was shocked yeah. because I thought, well, yeah. we've always had someone. And then I guess the position or the space that Mr. Honeysucker's been filling has kind of been a, a limbo position, I reckon. Right. Um, so this is to cement that. Yeah, this is this is to um, to really bring that position back and to bring it into what it is as as Courtney Stone has really moved into more of the PIO okay. position and not filling the role. Perfect. It was just I understand. There are a lot of faces we used to see that we don't. And speaking of which, Miss Walsham, it's nice to see you again. We haven't seen you in a little bit. Um, and then last one, and I will let us go. And this is more of a statement. We have really spent a lot of time talking about um, sanitation and solid waste pickup. And I think most of it relates to a process and customer service issue. And I think if anything, this last conversation has really cemented and I hope proved the idea that moving such a customer service centric role like sanitation and solid waste pickup to a department or division that is already in a customer service role, such as Metro Water, makes a lot of sense so that folks like y'all can focus on what public works really needs to be focused on, which is maintaining our roads, patching potholes, building you know new things. What, what we think of when the taxpayer thinks of the public works department doing and not having to worry about all of these contractual issues and customer service issues so that y'all can focus on the, the bigger fish and so um, I just wanted to offer that thought as uh, I think this conversation this evening really demonstrated that. And uh, I'm glad to see these new positions and I'm excited to see what is coming forward. And Ms. DeMassimo, I, I, I'm gonna hold you to meeting that goal. You, uh, you said we could do it. So thank you, Madam Chair. And I'll send the rest of these via email. Councilman Cash. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'll try to be quick. Uh, I do want to go back to traffic calming because to my constituents, that is a very important issue. Um, so we're adding, and I'm glad to hear that when with adding another position, we can increase the number of projects per year. Um, and I guess I wonder, um, adding a position or adding multiple positions in the future, would that mean we could save money on some of the consulting services that we contract out for? Yes. Good. And um, along with the increased cost of the second staff person, are there, there are probably increased capital costs for the like humps themselves or does, 
We, we included all of that. This level of effort is in the capital spending plan that was recently approved as part of the transportation plan. So we have that, that funding is already established. Okay, thanks. Uh, and so generally the ones that are going out, the 12 per every six months are like, I believe about $50,000 per, right. per neighborhood. How much of that is the humps themselves and how much of that is the consulting that goes along with it? Uh, well, all of the, um, the 50000 is the cost of the humps themselves. And so then we have some program management. Um, it's not really program management, more as data collection, which is probably about 5 to 10% of, okay. of that cost okay. for the will, design and, and construction, or, or the design and overview. Thanks. I will add that with such a backlog, while I want us to have the best traffic calming that we can, I also want people who are, like, feeling like they're applying every six months and not getting anywhere close to yes. getting them, that, that we possibly look at other traffic calming measures that might not be so expensive so that we can reach more, whether it's the, um, like the, the radar signs, not, the, not to ticket, but to mm -hmm. uh, make people aware of how fast mm -hmm. they're going. And, and even, uh, I know I have a lot of constituents that really want um, painted speed limit the, the, mm -hmm. the speed limit numbers on, on the, the streets. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some people are going to speed and, and just don't care, but there are some people who just aren't thinking about it. And w if they see those reminders, then I think it will g give us some sort of... It, I, I think it will be somewhat effective, even if it's not as effective as the speed humps. Um, and I'd rather, I'd rather us kind of pull more people in to feel safe in, on their streets. Um, And so um, just a quick comment, as, as you're restructuring the recycling, I hope that, um, I know when we went from four days to five days and some of the routes were readjusted, we, um, like there were some new folks that didn't know the routes as well. So I hope when you restructure that, that it's possible to like keep somebody that knows the route with the team and uh, so that no team is totally new to their route, if that's possible. Um, or, or at least for a while until they get used to the, to the routes. And so, I, I don't, I didn't see much on parking in here, but uh, Councilmember Johnson talked about it. So, parking enforcement is pretty much staying the same as it was last year. Parking enforcement, and Faye can talk to this, I'm sure more. But parking enforcement is staying the same internally as we roll out the smart parking program. So, wanting to see what they bring to the table in that partnership, so that we would be better prepared to know what we need to do in the next years. Gotcha, gotcha. And, and when yeah, we were we talking, and and you know, Councilmember, we're we're experimenting though with our existing parking enforcement personnel um, with a rotational. Um, Effort of which you've been, it's been um, and it's been effective. Pilot. It's been effective <laughs> um, too. Yes, Thank it's you. been very effective. Absolutely. So we're trying to take the resources that we do have now and use that in a in a way that gives us greater effect. Um, even as we're waiting on the smart parking RFP to roll out and that longer term, if you will, vision of parking enforcement and parking activity and so forth to to be realized. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Councilwoman Henderson. Thank you, Madam Chair. I appreciate it. I, I think so many of the, the things uh, that I was intending to ask have been addressed by other colleagues, which I think is great. But I did want to express my thanks as a six-year member of the Public Works Committee. Two of those is vice chair and one of those is chair. We, we have all known that Public Works has been woefully um, under, understaffed and underfunded for, for quite some time. And so I do appreciate that your presentation today is, is a convergence of a lot of the concerns that we have been advancing uh, through committee um, and as you know as as individuals. And so um, I'm I'm glad to see you know the the bikeway maintenance. I know Ms. Ms. Wallstrom will remember that's something that you know, many years ago I asked about a bike lane specific sweeper and then what were the staffing and then what was water doing it. And so I appreciate that there's been kind of a through line on those things that they have been. Um, you know, remembered and, and, and implemented. Um, I, I do want to concur with colleagues, particular to traffic calming. I understand, and that, you know, that's a program that I've been kind of focused on for a while as well. Um, I appreciate, um, you know, walking well before we kind of break into a run. Um, but what I'm maybe not uh, seeing represented here in this presentation, but perhaps you can speak to is 
kind of some of those things that seem to fall betwixt and between that aren't necessarily traffic calming, like safe crossings, um, often in the vicinity of schools, safe routes to school programming, um, you know, grant, a lot of good grant funding for that that I feel like, you know, we're just kind of not seeking. Um, and so I wonder if, you know, while not necessarily one more position to deliver more, but somebody that's in a similar space where they could do traffic calming to kind of ramp up in the near term, but long range, it could be safe crossings, safe routes to school, some of that programmatic. And so, you know, that kind of puts me in a headspace of thinking, well, maybe three people because it could pick up some of those things that aren't massive capital investment, but they still need a lot of programmatic intention. So council member, uh, one of the things that we're doing while this was intended to represent the new position request, recall uh, Shanna mentioned, you know, we are migrating some positions from other departments and in the migration of those planning positions in particular and the way that we're gonna be structuring traffic management within the new DOT, those things are gonna be working together in a way that's different that council hasn't seen in the past, particularly around the kinds of, of projects that you just mentioned with regard to safe routes to school, the vision zero activities, crosswalks and so forth. So I think you're gonna see the impact of, that you're talking about and it's gonna happen both with regard to new positions, but also just with regard to the reorganization and realignment of resources of, of current positions as well. I appreciate that. And you uh, were kindly in um, uh, Public Works Committee on Tuesday at the request of um, uh, Chair Nash, um, talking about, uh, you know, utility coordination, some of these kind of, you know, micro-trenching issues, and, um, and Council Lady Johnson touched on that in her um, initial remarks. And I had made a point um, uh, there, and I think Council Lady Johnson, I, I shared that with her, and she brought that up, about that kind of utility coordinator position um, and that, that there is that kind of one person who you know to be the convener. Um, I think we even have, you know, with like 5G pole location, there's a lot of kind of discrepancy. I mean, just driving here today, right? Like two, you know, of the 5G short poles, and then it's like, oh, well, now, you know, we do goose arms, and here we do modern stuff, and just that sort of um, coordination um, you know, with our utility providers, but also to kind of in that streetscape space. Is that something that's going to get picked up also through DOT with, with planning as far as like street lighting and, um, uh, sure. you know, co-location and that well, kind of stuff? Shannon and I both can, can answer that, but I was going to mention to you, there is a new position um, that we have in here that is, that is aimed toward exactly that activity. Um, in addition to that, remember that we are also rethinking how we do right-of-way administration and right-of-way management from a transportation space um, and curbside infrastructure management, all of which are going to be high focus, high priority areas for us. And again, this is again about realigning some of our existing resources um, and personal Personnel, in addition to some of the new positions that we've mentioned in here, but yes, the things that you um, that you believe we have lots of room for improvement, and we agree will be occurring. I appreciate that. I'm sorry, Kelsey Johnson, but funneling me a question. Um, uh, she was asking also, though, particular to um, utility coordination through some of the contract renegotiation, but also people engaging our right away as far as kind of fees and penalties. You know, so you did not follow are very clearly presented to you engineering standard of how you were supposed to bore or micro trench or what you were supposed to do. Um, you know, uh, can you, do we need a fee study in that place? Like what, what have we kind of done in, in that space to make sure, um, like in Council Lake Johnson example, yes, the gas company is gonna go back and repave that street, but just making sure that we are, um, you know, I worry sometimes with, you know, the, the large providers like, you know, the Google and so forth, just based on, you know, their kind of de minimis franchise fee and what they're paying for each permit for every, you know, the, the thousands of miles of stuff they're going to run, that that's aligned appropriately to kind of our operational costs to administer and coordinate all that. Can you speak to that? Sure. Um, we do fine. We do fine. But 
I'll be honest, I think our fines are too low, personally, that's me. Um, I think there is room for improvement and I think a fee study is, is valid and warranted. It's one of those when you're looking at everything that needs to be done, what do you, where do you focus? So as we grow and as, as, as we focus on that and having sufficient staff, I think looking at fees, looking at what the cost really is to go out and inspect, um, all of that needs to be done. Okay, I appreciate yeah. that. And then last question, um, particular to right-of-way inspection. Um, so I, I, I believe you have four added mm -hmm. staff, so that would be for a total of eight Metro staff, and then as needed, right, depending on what's going on, maybe still like having some contractual so that we can scale yes. up. Yes. Um, can you speak to then what that means kind of from a kind of organizational standpoint? So I get... Um, I, you know, a, a little bit worried just generally that in an effort to kind of be, be chasing all of this kind of, you know, utility installs and, you know, things that are kind of reactive, mm -hmm. um, that we're uh, less mindful from a just kind of sense of ownership, right, for, you know, this is your area that you're responsible for. Just, you know, gravel, messed up stuff, this pole didn't get replaced right, you know, advertising signs on the poles, just that, that kind of um, low-level maintenance that if you let it go, it starts to look really bad really fast. And so I just wonder, um, it, so four plus four, is that quadrant? Are we breaking it into six? Do we're, we have somebody in the nighttime to, like, I mean, I'm in my mind, I've always kind of thought maybe we need, like, ten-ish people in that space. And that's just me kind of thinking how it could maybe be broken apart and not approaching it technically or professionally. I wonder if you just speak to that. Well, we're currently broken up into quadrants. Our idea right now, um, assuming that it's funded, is that we would stay in quadrants, but we would have more people. So essentially, you would have one quadrant which has two people, and in the downtown, maybe even two or three, depending, although it's a small space. Um, because that way, two people are now learning about everything in the quadrant. Someone goes on vacation, someone's out sick, they have somebody who knows their area and knows it that well, as opposed to being singularly focused in a small area, having multiple people in a larger area provides for that backup and that um, cross-reference of knowledge in area. So that's where we're going right now. I do want to um, focus on one of the things I think is really important that I have recognized is, is the need for training and is the need for... Um, improved process um, understanding by inspectors as we bring these new ones on. We're also looking at the ones we have. Um, as I mentioned the other day, we're doing um, training right now. And I think one of the things that we want to focus on is empowering our inspectors to know that, yes, we ex it's a, I call it empowerment and accountability. We're empowering you to hold these, count these contractors responsible and making sure it's get done, but I'm also holding you accountable to know that you are doing that. So changing some of that culture shift, I think, is going to be really critical as we move into the new organization and as we bring new staff on. I appreciate that very much. And I think, you know, I, I appreciate the duplication, particular to the quadrant, so there's not just one person. I would ask us also to consider, you know, okay, implement mm -hmm. this, but also we are you know, 532-ish square miles. Um, and so, you know, we often talk about quadrants um, mm -hmm. in this city kind of historically and based on previous staffing levels. But I would also maybe ask us to think, like, should that be fifths or sixths? Um, you know, uh, it, 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 there's really a lot to cover, and I feel like we're really behind in that regard. So um, thank you. Appreciate it. Councilwoman Allen. Thank you. I'll, I'll just ask one question. Back to garbage, my favorite subject. Um, on the every other week recycling, which is my favorite part of garbage, um, are we going to be able to gather some kind of data just in, to, to evaluate how full things are? I mean, if we're, if we're actually picking up twice as much recycling or if we're just spreading it out over more time? It, it is our goal to, to do that, to implement a program in which we do have some staff that go out pop the lid, see what's going on, what are people having. Um, in our capital budget, we requested some software that we hope to roll out in the next year or two that will also help us to track both garbage cans and recycling cans on what is getting put in what, how much is it, where is that going. So right. yes, we do want to know 
how is the recycling program improving? So yes. That would be, that would mm -hmm. be really valuable mm -hmm. information, I think. And then second to that, if we discover there's some wiggle room in there, would there be any consideration of possibly expanding to multifamily, which is, I think, an area that doesn't get as much opportunity to recycle as I would like to offer them? Thank you, council member. It will be under consideration. And Thank maybe you. maybe one of the um, outcomes of the committee that um, council was just reviewing. <laughs> To do that. Yeah, great. That'd right. Thank great. you. That'd be great. Well, thank you, Director uh, Whitelaw, Ms. Massimo, and Ms. Wallstrom for your time. Uh, council members, we are 34 minutes over, and we have our last presentation, uh, our hearing, which is with the Water Department. Uh, so let's uh, keep that in mind as we're asking our questions. You can also submit questions to Maria and, and Austin, uh, and they'll make sure that the full council gets those responses.